Hello, my name is Dahl. Uh, we're going to be working on a uh, tutorial here. We are basically going to be doing an anime vector. Uh, it's what I mainly do, so uh, we're just going to cover the basics in this video. We're not going to go too in-depth on things. Uh, to start with, let's just cover what a vector is, uh, what a vector is, and what a raster is. Uh, to start with a vector, well, we're going to go ahead and open up an image that I created a little while ago just to show the basic concept of this. So what most people think of an image is a JPEG. Let's go ahead and get our layers window open. So we've got, uh, this is our original art here. Uh, if you zoom in, you can uh, see that you know, the pixels are pretty obvious once you zoom in far enough. If we go to about 100% size, it's a little jaggy, but not bad. Um, so uh, what a raster is, or what a normal image is, is it's based up of little tiny blocks of color. So if you zoom in, you can see that each one of these is one pixel or one square. Uh, what a vector is, is rather than basing it off of little squares of color, uh, we're going to go ahead and open it up here. Uh, it's a it's based off of mathematical equations. What that means is that uh, each of these different shapes on this uh, are uh, drawn with lines. Uh, each of these curves on the line are mathematically created so that you can zoom in all the way to this size and it's still 100% smooth. Whereas if we uh, hide this layer and go back to the original image, you can see that it turns into basically a blurry mess once you zoom in far enough. So uh, that is the difference between a vector and a raster. Or uh, There is also what is called a vexel. Uh, it's basically the same concept as a vector. It's mathematically done. And you can you know, uh, zoom it in like this but it's done in a program such as Photoshop. So if we take Photoshop here, we take our pen tool, and we draw this line, you're still going to get, uh, let's just uh, make this, uh, a custom shape here. And you can still zoom in on it, and it'll be perfectly smooth. But when you uh, when you look at it, it, this is actually going to be based off of uh, uh, pixels. It's a small ch definition change, but there is one, and some people are kind of anal about it. Uh, I'm, I don't worry about it too much, but uh, that is a difference. Uh, Vexel is usually made in Photoshop. Uh, and it's not a true vector, whereas a vector is usually made in a program such as Inkscape, or Flash, or Illustrator. We're using Illustrator since that's what I'm familiar with. That's what we'll be working with. All right, now that we've covered the differences between vector, vexel, and raster, uh, we're going to go ahead and just show the difference between me, what I would consider uh, a newbie vector and uh, something that has had a little bit more time put into it. I'm going to go ahead and hide the original art and show the vector that I was working on. We're going to zoom in a little bit on it and just show you some of the different options. You'll see that the line width is uh, a little varied in this. We did. You can make this quite a bit more consistent than I did. But I varied it because uh, this is kind of a playful image, uh, and we were going for something fun with it. So everything on this is, you know, a, a little bit, a little over the place. You'll see that the eyes are kind of you know, uh, all over the place. Just give it that kind of like googly eye look. You got uh, nice gradients in the hair and in there, as well as across here. And it's, uh, you know, just a cute, playful image. Uh, if we, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and hide that and show what uh, a lot of uh, beginner vector artists are going to do. Uh, 
Now this is usually uh, through no fault of their own. They're just trying to figure out what they're doing. And what we're and then what we're going to try to do is help prevent you from doing something like this for your first factor. So the first thing you'll notice is that we forgot to put the coloring in here. That's very easy to do. I will occasionally do it, but it's something that you want to avoid. You'll see that if we follow this line here, there's a blunt tip here rather than a, a, a curved tip or a point. Uh, same with here and around here and here and all over the place in the image. Uh, that's something that you want to avoid. We have a color sliver in here, right here. Uh, blunt tips here. Uh, we've got it overlapping here and here. If uh, there is no gradient in this, so like if we show the original image, we have this nice little gradient that goes from here and then this color to uh, kind of bring it all together, whereas this is all just hard colors. That can be a stylistic choice, but I thought it was a nice touch on this. And then uh, the eyes are kind of wobbly, whereas if we look at the initial one, the eyes are more circles rather than all over the place. And it's just a general and better quality image. Um, this is kind of an extreme example, um, but I have seen people do their images like this right off the bat. So uh, we'll, we're going to go ahead and uh, try to help you prevent that from happening. Uh, what, what, uh, what this person honestly did as their mistake is uh, there is something called strokes versus shapes. We'll cover that in more detail on our pen tutorial, but it's something to just keep in mind. We'll go ahead and close this now because we don't need it anymore. And what we're going to cover uh, in this tutorial is basically all of our tools here on the left hand side of the screen, all the tools, and then uh, all, uh, a lot of our, lit, our panels, like right here we have a swatches panel and a colors and uh, our gradient. And we'll cover what each of these is and how to use them. Uh, but first we'll cover just creating a new file. So to do that you click on file and then new or you can hit control N. Uh, it's the basic shortcut most things uses. Uh, we can name the file. We'll just call it temp for now. Give it a custom profile which is fine. Artboards of one, you can create multiple artboards. That's uh, something a little bit more advanced and it's not needed for, for the scope of this tutorial, so you can ignore it. Uh, size of letter, uh, letter is a good size. It's just eight and a half by 11. That's a, me a standard American measurement. If you're from another country, you may have something different in there. I'm gonna, uh, I have it set to inches right now. You can have it set to pixels or points. We'll just change it to points for now. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and, and change the orientation to uh, landscape rather than portrait. Um, the bleed is fine. You'll have your color mode here under advanced. Yours is probably closed. If this is the first time you've done this, we can open it up with the little arrow. And uh, there's two modes in here, CMYK and RGB. CMYK is your default printing format, and RGB is your default web or monitor format. Uh, most of my work is done with the intention of, I may print this sometimes, so I usually leave it on CMYK, but uh, you can get a better color range with RGB. So it's up to you which one you choose. I generally, I tend to leave mine in CMYK. Raster effects is 300. We'll cover this more in the coloring tutorial, but for now we can just leave it at 300. And then the preview mode is something that you're not going to need to use. You can just leave that to default. Click OK, and we'll create our, our first file. You'll see here that it's called temp. We're zoomed in to 147%, uh, and it, it shows you your color, uh, color mode of CMYK. And if you wanted to close it, you could click that, since we haven't done anything. Uh, it'll save your settings from before, so you can create new and click OK if you do something like that. And then over here we have our layers. We have our layers palette. You can uh, see this little eye here that'll hide that layer. You can lock the layer so you can't edit it. You can double click on the layer to rename it uh, if you double click on the text. 
Or if you double click on like the image, you'll get the layer options palette where you can change your, uh, your outlines mode. Um, light blue is fine. I usually use like a magenta or a green because it's very easy to see. We'll go with the magenta for now. You can also change some other options in here like print, show, preview, dim image. Uh, we don't need any of this. This is stuff for uh, that you can usually use for like coloring, that sort of thing. So click OK. And then we're, uh, and then after this, this is just, you know, your basic image. Next thing we're going to start covering is all of the different icons and tools over on the left here. All right. Uh, for to cover the different tools, the first one we're going to cover is the pen tool. Uh, so you can come over here and click on the pen tool. It'll be short kind of P. Click and put in a node or a point. And then if you click at another point, you'll create a line over to the next point. And then you can just continue on clicking and you'll eventually make yourself a shape. Uh, the other thing you can do with the pen tool is you can click and put in a nod and while still holding the mouse you can click and drag to create these adjustment bars. Release it when you have the adjustment bars where you want it and then you can click and drag again uh, and this will create a curve. The, the curve of the line uh, follows where the adjustment bars are. So uh, halfway through the line is how far it'll go. So we can do that and we can click and do the same thing over here. So if we click and follow the lines like this, get kind of an egg shape. Uh, next thing we'll cover as far as the tools go is the selection tool or V. It's the black arrow up here. This will allow us to select a shape and move it around, like so. You can also click and drag over multiple objects to select them so you can drag them around as well. Uh, the next shape uh, uh, tool we'll cover is the direct selection tool, or A. You can click on that and then select your point uh, object. You can still click and drag around. You can still drag over multiple objects, but the difference between this one is uh, you can actually click on the individual points and move those points around. So if we click on this uh, point here, we can move it all the way over here and make kind of a crazy looking shape. We can also adjust the individual bars. So we can move the bars around and make like a figure eight shape. Uh, oh, and one thing you'll probably hear me do or see me do is Edit, Undo, Move, which is Control Z. It'll just take us back a step. So like, let's say I move it to here. I'm like, oh, I don't like that. I can hit Control Z, and that'll move us back to that point. Uh, the next thing we'll cover is the Lasso tool. The Lasso tool basically allows us to uh, select an object or select multiple objects with it. And then there's the uh, pen tool which we just covered. I suppose one thing other thing I should cover is that uh, when you're clicking and dragging when you've got the uh, the adjustment bar that is not touching your mouse pointer where you want it you can hold down the alt key and then adjust the adjustment bar to another point. Um, this is you can see how I'm swinging it around here uh, this will make it so you can do some uh, fun things with it, and it, uh, learning how to do this is part of learning the pen tool. Um, it's probably the most complicated thing to learn how to do properly, uh, so we're not going to cover it too in-depthly here. We'll cover it in the next tutorial, the pen tutorial. We also have, the, the after the pen tool, we have the type tool. You can click, type something. I'm trying to type kind of quietly here. So, uh, And then after you're done typing what you want, you can click on the selection tool and uh, you know, drag it around. You can also come up to the top here and 
select your typeface, select what style you want it, and select your, uh, your pixel, your, what your font size is. You can also uh, make a, uh, you can adjust the, uh, the font to a different size by you know, doing like an arc or a bulge or something like that. You can do some fun things with it. Uh, the reason this works is because all fonts are vectors. Uh, so any any shape that you see on a font is actually a vector. So it is you can adjust them like that. So we'll leave that down here in the corner. Uh, after that, we have the line tool. I'm actually going to go ahead and open up our color window here just so I can uh, play with the colors and I'll open up our swatch. This will just make things slightly simpler for me to explain. Uh, we'll probably actually open up our stroke window too because we'll need that. So we have three different uh, panels here, color, swatches, and stroke. Uh, for the line, you can click and drag and create a line. You'll see that we in here we have a stroke and we have a fill. Since this is just a straight line, you can only ha you can have a fill, but it's not going to show anything. You need to have it on a stroke, and then you can show how thick that line is by adjusting the weight of the stroke up. Uh, you can have different end caps, which are the points on the side here, so you can turn it to kind of a curve, uh, a, a butting out one, or a projecting cap where it actually goes past it, or a butt cap where it just butts up with the point. You can also come down to the line profile here and change the line profile so it goes to different points. We're going to leave it on uniform and just leave it like that. You can also use the curve arc tool, which is basically you click, you drag, and it'll create an arc in between two points. I never use this. Uh, it's a Decent way of drawing a circle, but I don't like it, so I don't use it. Uh, inside of it, you also have a spiral tool, which will create a spiral for you, and a uh, rectangular grid and a poly grid. Uh, you can play with these. I generally don't use these very often, but there are reasons to use them. Uh, then we have our shapes panel. Uh, you'll notice that any time that you have a, a panel that has this little white uh, square in the corner, it means that you can pop up a new thing. Uh, and then if you click on the bar here, you can pop it out. Uh, then you can click on this to make it go back and forth. I did not cover the different options in here because we're going to be covering that in the pen tool. But we can do the same thing with this one here. So we can pop this out so we can see all the different shapes. So you can make a rectangle, you can make a rounded rectangle, where basically the tips are rounded, you could make a star, you could make a circle, you could make a whole bunch of different shapes. I'm just control Z to get uh, rid of these, we'll just make a star. Uh, one other thing I should say is you can click on this fill here, and then come over here to the colors palette and click on the fill. And you'll fill the inside of this with a color. And you can click on either this uh, none, hit the bracket key, or click on it over here to remove that fill. You can also see here you have the swap fill and stroke, or shift plus X. If you click this, it swaps the colors around. This can be very handy if, say, like uh, you want to uh, see what it looks like so we can swap it back and forth you see by hitting shift and X or clicking on it uh, that's a technique we'll be using quite often inside of the uh, pen tutorial so we'll cover that further then um, then we have uh, our paintbrush tool which just basically allows us to draw a line and then it smooths out the line for us uh, a pencil tool which does the same thing only it draws a thinner line. And then we have the blob brush. And the blob brush can do kind of the same thing. 
uh, except for it, it rather than being a stroke like this one is or this one is you see how it's uh, just using the stroke it is doing it all with a fill so uh, so that is the difference between the blob brush tool and then the paintbrush and pencil tool I never use any of these uh, for uh, for uh, anime vectors uh, but you may find a use for them. Uh, you have the eraser tool here where you can uh, erase across something. So like if I click on this, choose my eraser tool and then just erase across, you'll see that I erase part of that. Can come in handy. I don't use it very often, but I do occasionally use the eraser tool. We have the rotate tool where when you click you have to have an object selected so you'd have to take your direct selection tool or your uh, uh, selection tool and select the object uh, click on the rotate tool or hit R and then you see how you have this little blue dot in the center you can click and point put that dot wherever you want by default it's right in the center and then you can click and drag anywhere and start spinning it from wherever that blue point is. So let's say we want to rotate it from this corner here, and it'll rotate it from that corner. It makes it easy to, you know, uh, say like make a copy of this uh, star, paste it right directly on top of it, and then rotate the next star to a point like this. So that's why you would do that. Uh, then we have the uh, the different shear, reshape, and scale tools. These basically allow you to uh, adjust a shape. A shear will shear it. Uh, it allows for some weird, you know, perspective effects with it. Uh, and the other ones, you know, reshape will allow you to change the shape on it to something different. I don't use them very often. Uh, you can. Uh, free transform is kind of the same thing. Uh, the the different uh, tools in here uh, you can say like select the probably the one that does the most is a twirl tool and click on part of it and you'll twirl that section you can create some crazy effects with it that was kind of cool and I'm gonna hit Control uh, Z in order to uh, cancel that. Um, the next thing that we're actually going to cover is, is in this same area, and it's the width tool. What this tool allows you to do is on, say, like a stroke like this, it allows you to click on a stroke and adjust part of the stroke to be thicker and thinner. So, like, let's say we want this end of it to be super thick, but we want this part of it to be really thin, we can do that. And it allows you to create a line that will follow this curve and get some line variation in there. Um, again, I usually do this with the pen tool and trace both sides. You can play with the uh, stroke and do it this way as well. I find this a little harder and takes a little more time. And you know, you're going to end up with with some issues down the road if you go this route. They're nothing you can't work around. But again, I find it to be suboptimal, so we'll, I'll cover that more in the pen tool as well. Uh, we have the free transform tool, which uh, basically allows you to uh, transform different parts of it. I'm not going to use it. You don't need it. We have the shape builder tool, which is part of the live paint kit. I don't like live paint. I don't use it. So... Uh, we're not going to cover it, but uh, if you'd like to learn more about the live paint, uh, there are other tutorials on the internet that you can check out. Uh, then you have what is the perspective grid. Um, we're going to pop this out a little bit just so I can show it. Uh, when we select the selection, you can select which part of the perspective grid you want. It's the shift V. So uh, if you click on an object, you can make it go to a part of the 
uh, you know, the different things. So it's basically following the perspective of that part. You can undo that. And uh, down here you can select which part of it you want to use in here. Um, the perspective grid can be very powerful. It's beyond the scope of this tutorial though. Uh, it's something that, you know, if you, you can get it activated pretty easily and it's hard to figure out where, how to get rid of it because it's kind of annoying. Uh, it, it'll, you know, cover everything up and get in your way. So we're going to just show you how to turn it off for now. But you can go into your uh, perspective grid. So view, perspective grid, and then hide grid. And that'll just hide the grid for you. I might cover the perspective, the perspective grid a little bit uh, when it comes to the coloring tutorial. Uh, if uh, there's a big demand for it, we might go through it. But for now, we'll, we'll just ignore it. Um, then we have the mesh tool. The mesh tool is part of uh, going to be part of the advanced coloring. It allows you to do uh, some fun stuff with the. I'm going to turn my uh, color back on with uh, gradient coloring. So you can create some crazy color effects inside of your shapes with it. Uh, this is kind of a more advanced option to use, and uh, but you should be aware that it's there. It's useful to know about. And then we have the uh, just a gradient tutorial. So uh, we, there's also the gradient tool or cheat. So like let's say if we click on this, we'll actually need to open up the uh, gradient window here. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll select this color here and we'll, we can turn it to a gradient with one of our gradient swatches like this. Or you can click on this and the gradient, like let's say it's red and we want to turn it into a gradient. You can click there as well. And then the gradient tool itself, what it does is it allows you to change where the color is going from. So if you drag it around, you can see that the colors are changing. So like uh, where I started is the yellow, where I click and drag is the left hand side, and where I end is the right hand side. So you can see you can do different color and gradient drag effects. So we're just going to leave it as a flat color for now. This will be covered in much more in depth on our coloring tutorial. The eyedropper tool basically allows you to select a color. Uh, the blend tool uh, allows you to blend between two objects. We're not going to uh, cover that too greatly because um, I don't use it very often and it's not something that you should really need to use but there's a small part of what the blend tool does. I honestly don't like it very much so I don't use it much. Uh, symbol sprayer, we'll cover that in the coloring tutorial a little bit. Column graphs, uh, this is, if you look at it, it is more for business applications. So like you can make a pie chart. If you click and drag, you'll see that you created a pie chart. And you know, you can click in and name it whatever you want. And you know, import data. You, so you can import from say like an Excel spreadsheet make a new row, switch the cell style and all that. Uh, we're not going to use, we're not going to cover it because it's not really needed for us, uh, our purposes. Um, then we have the artboard tool. This, if you click on this, it uh, gives you the marching ants uh, and you can click and drag this around. This is basically the bounding box of our image. So when we save the image, uh, what is inside the white portion is going to actually be what is saved. You can see how it's a square. So like if I save this right now, everything in the dark gray part would be cut off. Um, can be handy. Uh, it allows you to adjust the artboard to whatever size you need. Uh, the slice tool here is used for say like a web design. So like let's say I make a slice here. It'll uh, allow you to save this particular image as two, say like JPEGs or PNGs. So you've got this one slice here and this one slice here. You can also come in and add extra slices. So now we've got you know, three different ones. We've got one, two, one really thin one here, and four. So 
uh, this can be very useful for cutting apart, say, like a, a an image, uh, so you can save it for a website. Uh, the hand tool allows you to click and drag around. You'll probably notice that I've been doing this without actually clicking on the hand tool. That's because, let's say I'm on this and I select this. Let's say I wanted to drag the image around. I just hold down the space bar, it gives me the hand, and I can drag it to wherever I want. So I don't actually hit the H key very often, but it's, it's uh, useful to know it's there. Uh, zoom uh, is Z. You can scroll, uh, click and drag to zoom in. You can hold control to zoom out. You can also hold alt and scroll in and out to zoom. And you can press uh, control plus and control plus, uh, control plus and minus to zoom in and out. There are several different ways. That covers uh, the basic tools. What we're going to cover next is probably going to be all the panels. Uh, we'll show you uh, the different panels and how I would lay them out. All right, we're going to go ahead and cover all of our uh, different panels over here. So we'll go through that quickly. I'm just going to quickly create some squares just to have something to work with like a green one and a red one. Uh, what we're basically going to cover here is just layer sorting. So we're going to create some different uh, some different squares and in the layers you can click on the little triangle here and you can see all of our different shapes uh, and you can click and drag them around to change the sorting. So if we put uh, we're going to overlap these all by a little bit so you can see if the, uh, the bottom is the bottom and then you can sort them through. You can also go into object, arrange, bring to front and send to back or bring forward and back forward. That'll bring it one step. And so that's uh, that's how to sort stuff. Uh, you can also create new layers here. So it, like you can click the new layer and create some new layers. And we'll just make something that covers everything up and make it pink. And you can hide the layer by clicking the little eye icon. You can change the layer to what's called an outline mode by control clicking it. And that'll change this layer to what's called an outline mode. Uh, it'll make it so that you can still see the shapes. You can see how you can see the layer here. And you can still adjust it but it, you can see through it. So we have that set up like that. Uh, one thing I should mention as far as, you know, uh, bringing stuff forward and bringing it to the back, that is, this uh, arrange is based off of the layer. So if we bring it all the way to the front, it'll bring it all the way to the top of this layer, but it'll not bring it on top of this layer. Uh, you can also lock the layer, so we can't edit this, but we can still edit anything behind. Or we can lock both and hide them. Um, so that's a great way of doing things. And if you have something behind, you can also always you know, open this up and click on it here. And then you can delete it by highlighting it and deleting it or drag it to the trash can. Uh, we had it locked so it wouldn't let us do it. Another thing you should be aware of is let's say you like this layer a lot. You can make a copy of it by dragging it there and you have an exact copy that you can then lock, hide, and then you can edit it if need be. So that's something good to do there. Uh, one major thing you'll want to know about layers is that on each of the layers you have this little thing here, which shows you all sorts of different options. Uh, and you can go through and read these yourself and play with them. Uh, they Every single layer will have them, so like let's say you wanted to go to a large list mode, it'll give you a list of all your different colors, small thumbnails where I normally have it. You can change your color modes here. Uh, this is the one I normally use, but we'll call we'll cover a lot of this and say like the pen tutorial and the coloring tutorial. Yeah, but it's nice to know now. Another thing you should know is you see these little collapse two icons here that'll make these smaller. 
and you can click and drag them out as well and it'll stay collapsed. Uh, you can have uh, these things just floating on top of everything else like this or you can merge them with it. The nice thing about merge is that you can't cover up your uh, your scroll bars here and I have mine set up like this. It, uh, uh, this is my default setup. Uh, you can click here in the basic workspace. This is what I actually have this set to. I basically set this up, went to new workspace and called it basic workspace and then hit OK. But you uh, you have, you know, the essentials is the default one. Uh, I was playing around with this one so it looks weird. Automation will give you that. Tracing will give you this and you know all the different ones, but I usually just have it set to that And That is the main thing you'd want to go through on that uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this the next thing we probably want to cover is going to be What is a good image for a beginner to use? so uh, we have all these different uh, chibi images, which are all actually very good images. So we've got this one here, this one, this one. These are great images to start with. I'm actually going to uh, release with this video a zip file that you can download, uh, where you can, which will come with all of these, as well as this, uh, this differences file, uh, so you can take a look at all of this. So. Uh, the great the thing about these that make them good is because they have nice broad strokes of color and they're not very complicated so they're uh, simple to do they shouldn't take uh, a ton of time and they'll look good when they're done uh, they're also relatively easy to follow there's nothing super complicated in them they're slightly rough which you know you can uh, fix in the in the uh, in the inking stage uh, an example of a bad image to excuse me is going to be uh, something that I'm currently actually working on this is a vector that I'm currently working on uh, and this would be a bad choice for anyone for one it's a manga page uh, so it's you know if we zoom in on it, it you can see that it's very pixelated the lines are not very well defined uh, this line here is thicker than every other line, and it looks a little weird. Um, but it's, you know, it's just a bad image. Another uh, choice for a good image, besides, you know, like these chibi images that I have released here, would be something uh, like a, just a zoom in on somebody's face, like a close-up, or, you know, just something simple. Don't try to go crazy with your first vector, just pick something easy to do. Um, and that covers all of the basics. Uh, if uh, anybody has any questions for me, uh, let me know, either on the video or in thread. I'll try to answer them uh, also on my DeviantArt page. And the, what we're going to be covering next is we're going to be uh, working on an inking tutorial. So what we'll probably be doing is one of these chibi images. So more likely we'll do something like this. More than likely we'll be working on this. So I'll see you in that video and uh, have a good one there.